The 72nd anniversary of the founding of the National Health Service has been marked across the country with a nationwide round of applause. With echoes of the weekly claps for carers around the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic, there was appreciation for the work of NHS staff at a time of challenges unprecedented in its history. In a moment, we'll explore what the experience of the virus so far reveals and look at today's call for social care to be urgently tackled. First, our home editor, Mark Easton, on a moment when the country came together. This evening, the nation came together in gratitude. Communities clapping their appreciation in every corner of the United Kingdom, on pavements and doorsteps, mighty and humble, to say thank you to the NHS and all those who did their bit to save lives during the pandemic. The hope is that every July the 5th, the health service's birthday, the country will find a moment to remember Britain's key workers, embedding what began as a social media post into the national calendar. What we have proven is that we can be there for each other in the last months, whether it is volunteering and looking out for one another. So if we can hold on to that, then we are just stronger as a nation to go through any crisis that we're going to face. The clap for carers has invigorated neighbourhoods, including streets like this one in Bristol, where 12-year-old Harry has become something of a local star. It's been a weird time, but it's amazing like how we can all pull together and achieve something like this. I think it's valuable for the country personally to see it follow on because I think it's something that we've lost and actually it's nice to see it coming back again. Because we've lived here for 11 years and we didn't know a lot of our neighbours. So this has drawn everybody out and it's been lovely. <laughs> In Glasgow, a lockdown band has formed on the city's Dumbarton Road, local musicians turning up to perform together alongside the clapping. Going from maybe 10 gigs a week, 7 gigs a week to nothing was quite severe. So to bring it onto the street and, and just do something different other than looking at the four walls during lockdown has been a great experience. Someone who lives by themselves, it's lovely to come together uh, and I'm a musician so it's lovely to play live. It's uh, a definite boost. This afternoon, a spitfire took to the skies over East Anglia to tip its wings above the region's hospitals, a message of thanks painted on its underside. It also flew over the Cambridgeshire village of Witchford to acknowledge the efforts of local women who spent lockdown sewing scrubs for doctors and nurses. We've brought everybody out who's been making the scrubs and, uh, yeah, really excited to, and honoured to, um, to see, them, see them flying over. How's everyone? In nearby King's Lynn, Thank you for you guys. the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge turned up for tea at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The Prince of Wales also paid his own personal tribute to health workers. Uh, remarkably selfless nurses, doctors, paramedics and countless other staff have made costly sacrifices to provide treatment. And in tribute to them, we have come together as a nation to thank them for their skill, professionalism and dedication. In the garden of number 10, Boris Johnson hosted a tea party for the NHS workers who helped save his life from coronavirus as the country was invited to share a cuppa or a glass with their neighbours, nourishing lockdown spirit for the challenges to come. Mark Easton, BBC News. Well, the latest figures released by the government show another 22 deaths of people who had tested positive for coronavirus recorded for the last 24 hours. Total UK deaths now number more than 44,000. Four months on from the first of those deaths, our medical correspondent Fergus Walsh now takes us through the figures, both here and around the world. By any measure, the UK is one of the worst affected countries in the world. Official figures show there have been more than 44,000 COVID-19 deaths in the UK, the third highest death toll after the United States and Brazil. If you look at excess deaths, the number above what you'd expect for the time of year, that rises to over 65,000. That means very roughly one in a thousand people in the UK have died due to the coronavirus pandemic. By far the biggest single risk factor is age. 85 in every 100 deaths has been among people aged 70 and over. The younger you are, the lower your risk. Daily confirmed coronavirus cases 
have fallen from a peak of over 5,000 a day in April to fewer than 1,000 a day now. There are hot spots in areas like Leicester and there are thought to be about 1 to 2,000 cases a day that are never identified. But although coronavirus cases are falling across most of Europe, globally the pandemic is accelerating. It took more than three months to reach a million cases worldwide. By mid-May, it had topped 5 million, and it now stands at over 11 million, with a million new cases being added every week. The global death toll is now over half a million. In the United States, the world's worst affected country, there have been record numbers of new daily cases, with 50,000 being added every 24 hours, driven by outbreaks in states in Florida, Arizona and Texas. Many other countries are also seeing a surge in cases, with major outbreaks in Brazil, Mexico, India, South Africa and Russia. Little wonder that the World Health Organization has said the pandemic is not even close to being over. Fergus Walsh there. Well, on this 72nd anniversary of the health service, the head of the NHS in England has said that the pandemic has put a harsh spotlight on adult social care, calling for it to be reformed and properly resourced within a year. The government has said it intends to bring forward a long-term plan. Here's our political correspondent, Chris Mason. Almost 30,000 more care home residents in England and Wales died during the early months of the coronavirus outbreak than during the same period last year. The pandemic has prompted questions to be asked yet again about the future of social care. Charles Taylor runs three care homes in Oxfordshire, which haven't lost any residents to the virus. But he says the pressures on the sector are huge. Everybody is stretched, everyone is having to cut corners and what we do is not something that you should be forced to cut corners in. I mean, when it's caring for your grandmother, you shouldn't have to try and find a cheaper way of doing it. Morning, sir. Now, the head of the NHS in England says change must come quickly. I would hope that by the time we are uh, sitting down uh, this time next year, on the 73rd birthday of the NHS, we have actually, as a country, been able to decisively answer the question, how are we going to fund and provide high quality social care for my parents' generation? In his first speech as Prime Minister, Boris Johnson made a big promise. We will fix the crisis in social care once and for all. That was very nearly a year ago now, and since then, political convulsions and then the coronavirus itself further exposing the challenges facing social care. The government acknowledges that there are complex questions that need addressing and a long-term solution is essential. But bluntly, the reality of this year so far has been wrestling with the short-term challenge of attempting to cope with a pandemic. We protected the NHS during the peak of this crisis and we will protect the NHS in the future. And even just last week we put another one and a half billion in. So we, we are constantly ensuring that the NHS has what it needs and just the sums of money that the Treasury have, have put into the NHS over the last few months have been unprecedented. In Scotland, free personal care is provided, some care costs are capped in Wales and home care is free for the over 75s in Northern Ireland. In England, the government says billions of pounds of funding has been made available. Labour say money coupled with a strategy is what's required. We need an immediate package of support because the virus isn't over for social care and we need the long-term changes that provide services with the right funding. For decades, governments have promised to improve social care. The big question is whether COVID-19 will be the spur for real change. Chris Mason, BBC News.